we're going to take a look at a couple examples from section 4.5, beginning with exercise 14. Now this exercise asks us to prove this statement by contradiction. For all prime numbers a, b, and c, a squared plus b squared is not equal to c squared. Okay, so as we begin this, what I want to stress is that the important thing when learning proof by contradiction is to understand the process. Um, we're going to begin by supposing the negation of that statement. All right, and this whole idea goes back to something we saw earlier in the semester when we were doing those knights and knaves uh, problems, those logic puzzles, um, which were based around the idea of this contradiction rule that says if you suppose something and that leads to a contradiction, then the, the statement that you suppose was false. Okay, so we're intentionally supposing something that we think is going to lead to a contradiction. That is, we're supposing the negation of the statement that we're trying to prove. Okay, so we begin by saying suppose not. That is, suppose there exist prime numbers a, b, and c such that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, that's the negation of the given statement. And you know, this is why it was so important for us to understand how to write a negation of a statement, because that is a critical step here in proof by contradiction. So using algebra, we can solve for a squared and then factor that difference of squares that we get. And a reason that you might think to do this is we're talking about prime numbers. So prime numbers have to do with the way things factor. Okay, it's a property that has to do with factoring. Um, and so we know a difference of squares is something that can be factored. So here we're writing a squared as c plus b times c minus b. This problem, by the way, has a hint in the back of the book which tells us to do exactly this, okay, to, to factor a difference of squares. Now, here, on, uh, one piece of this that is important to recall is the unique factorization theorem. And that says that integers can be factored down into prime factors in only one way, okay, disregarding rearranging the order. A squared is not prime because it's the square of A. We know A is prime, but A squared is not prime. And that means there's a few different ways that we could factor it uh, with two positive integers. We could take A squared and write it as A times A, or we could write it as a product of the integers A squared times one, um, and so that, that factored expression we see there, c plus b times c minus b, is a product of two integers. And so either we have a times a, or we have a squared times 1. Okay. And I'm going to talk about how we know we're dealing with um, the latter of those two. So because b is prime, we know it's bigger than 1. So c plus b must be bigger than c minus b. And so if those two factors are different integers, then what we must have is a squared times 1. Now, the, the fact that c minus b must be 1 is, is the part that we're going to use. So I didn't mention that c plus b is equal to a squared there in the proof, um, but that's also... Uh, something that's true. Um, now, we could have taken that original equation, okay, that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We could have solved it for b squared instead and said b squared equals c squared times uh, minus a squared. So if we repeat that same argument, 
but starting with b squared equals c squared minus a squared, then we could also conclude that 1 equals c minus a. And that tells us that solving for c, we have c equals b plus 1, and also c equals a plus 1. So a and b must be equal. And so substituting into a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we have 2a squared equals c squared. Okay, I know this, you may want to sort of read through this two or three times um, because there's a lot going on here. But what we were able to do here is say that 2a squared equals c squared. Now, unique factorization of the integers comes up again because both sides of that equation must have the same prime factors. Now, a is prime, c is prime, 2 is also prime. So on the left side, we have 2 times a times a. On the right side, we have c times c. That contradicts the unique factorization of integers because on one side, we have the prime factors 2 and a and a. And on the right side, we have c times c. Those can't be the same, but they must be the same. So there's our contradiction. Um, and so because we reached a contradiction, it must be that the given statement that we were trying to prove is in fact true. Okay, because we, contra we found a contradiction by supposing the negation of that. Okay, you can find additional examples of proof by contradiction in the textbook. Um, again, it's a challenging but extremely useful technique for proof writing um, because sometimes the original statement as given is very difficult to prove directly but lends itself to an easier argument if you are to take the proof by contradiction approach. So that's the value of proof by contradiction. Okay, so the next exercise I want to look at with you is exercise 28. And 28 actually asks us to prove something by both contradiction and contraposition. Now, since we just did a proof by contradiction, I'm just going to focus on the contraposition part. So it says, prove the following statement by contraposition. For all integers m and n, if m n is even, then m is even or n is even. Okay, so if we want to prove this by contraposition, what we need to do is rewrite this in the contrapositive form. So that would look like for all integers m and n, if m is odd and n is odd, then m n is odd. Okay, notice the or switched to an and. Um, one other detail I want to note here that might come to mind for you is instead of saying not even, I just said odd. And that's fine because uh, the quotient remainder theorem tells us that a, an integer is either even or odd. So if it's not even, it's odd. If it's not odd, it's even. Okay, so um, that's different than positive and negative. So um, not negative is not the same as saying positive. Um, but with even and odd, as long as you're talking about integers, you know, no problem. Okay, so proof. Suppose M and N are odd integers. By definition of odd, there exist integers j and k such that m equals 2j plus 1 and n equals 2k plus 1. Okay, that's our definition of odd. Now we do substitution, and this is going to look an awful lot like proofs that we've been doing all along in Chapter 4. Um, because what we are doing is a direct proof of the contrapositive. So the style of proof is very similar to what we've been doing. The difference is that we began by taking the statement they are asking us to prove and rewriting it as the contrapositive, which we know is logically equivalent to the original. 
So we've got our algebra here, and that shows that mn, by definition of odd, is odd. Okay, and that completes our proof. Um, if we wanted to prove this by contradiction, and I don't go through that proof here in the video, but let me just briefly sort of touch on how that would be different. If we wanted to prove this was um, prove this statement by contradiction, we would say we would take that original statement and we say suppose not, and that is suppose we have integers m and n such that m n is even, but m is odd and n is odd. And so the the what would be involved there is just is um, to show that if m and n are both odd, then their product is odd, which is exactly what we're doing here. The difference would be that then we would say, but m n is supposed to be even, and we've shown it's odd. That's our contradiction, and so the original statement is true. So there. There would be a lot of similarities to the two proofs, um, but you know, slightly different, um, you know, overall format, okay, or framework. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. This is a challenging topic, but again, in some cases, these indirect arguments um, make our task easier than it would be if we tried to just go with a direct proof every time. Okay, so these, these are techniques that can really save us some time and effort, um, you know, in certain cases. All right, see you in the next video.